Hey friends, welcome back to Taking God in His Word, a Bible study for us where we are trying to empower the people we love to become stronger disciples of Jesus Christ. And last week, if you remember in episode 7, we talked about the woman at the well and the, the woman of Samaria encountering Jesus. And we looked at the first part and how Jesus helps us break down barriers. Well, we're going to continue on with that story starting in verse 16. And we're going to continue to see how Jesus breaks down barriers, especially when it comes to sin. So the lesson he's going to teach us as Christians when it comes to sharing our faith is, is to help us how to see past sin. Now, I'm not saying we're affirming sin or accepting sin, but to see past it and see that person still as a distorted, marred image bearer who needs the grace and mercy of God in our lives. Because guess what? That was us and still is us as we wrestle with our sin. So we need to have that humility to understand that we too wrestle with our sinful nature and that we need a savior. And Jesus is going to model this so perfectly for us. So let's jump into verse 16 real quick. Um, and pick up from the story of the woman at the well. And this is what it says. I'll be reading from the ESV. Grab your translation that's comfortable and let's go for this journey real quick. Let's see where God takes us. So verse 16, it says this. Jesus said to her, go call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you are right in saying I have no husband for you have had five husbands and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. So let's just stop right there and see what's going on in this scene. So like, first and foremost, Jesus just kind of calls out the fact, why are you at the well in the middle of the day? Well, this woman has had multiple men in her lives. She's struggling here with this sin. And Jesus doesn't affirm it. He doesn't, he doesn't deny it. But he kind of makes her come face to face with the reality of the sin in her lives, just like we need to. We have to come face to face and confront our sin. And if you notice in the story, what does the woman in the well try to do? She does what every human being in the history of mankind does when it comes to being confronted with their sin. She tries to divert. She tries to go a different direction and, and, and gets caught up in the religious matters of which well or which mountain we worship on. And Jesus is like redirecting the conversation and then bringing it back to what she truly needs, which is the living water of Jesus Christ. We all need that living water. And so it's beautiful how Jesus models for us here how to do evangelism. He doesn't condemn her, but he doesn't let her off the hook. He sees pastor sin. I like, I like to think of it this way. The question we need to be able to ask ourselves as Christians when it comes to evangelism and sharing our faith is, are we able to see beyond the sin that disfigures people, right? And to treat them with the respect and dignity they have as image bearers of God. Because we all, and I love how Francis Schaeffer, he's a, um, he's a, he's, He's passed on since, but he's a he was a pastor, and he also was a professor at Covenant Seminary, and he also helped fund the Francis Schaeffer Institute, and he really loved witnessing to non-believers. He had a heart for non-believers. He always described people as glorious ruins, and what he means by that is like think about when you go to a castle that's you know it's a ruin, and you but you know at one point in time it was glorious and and whole and complete. Well, that's what we are as human beings when we deal with our sinful nature, our sin. Uh, and our brokenness, what we are is glorious ruins. We were before the fall, right? Human beings were glorious and good. But when sin enters in the world, we see that we're disfigured, that we're kind of broken and have chips in us. And sin affects all aspects of our life. It doesn't mean we've completely lost the image of God, but it means it needs to be restored. We need a rehab project done in our hearts. And that's what God's doing. And that's what Jesus is doing in the story. He's revealing the need for rehab to take place in uh, the heart of this woman. And so as we jump back in, uh, into verse 23, he says, But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father and the Spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming. He was called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus responds to her, I who speak to you am he. So Jesus reveals himself to her. And then watch what happens as we jump to verse 27. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman. Once again, another barrier is being broken down. That a man was interacting with a woman and sharing the faith and having this conversation. 
but no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. So think about that. So we see the barriers. He broke down the cultural barrier of Samaritan and Jew. He broke down the gender barrier of man and woman. Now he breaks down the barrier of sin, our greatest need. That's the barrier we all need broken down, right? We all have inherited this sinful nature. We, uh, we sin because we are sinners. We've inherited this nature from Adam and Eve. And Christ is showing that we need restoration. We need justification. We need Christ to step in for us, live the life we should have, died the death we deserved, so we can be reconciled to the Father, so we can have the living water well up inside of us and flow out of us. And look what happens. Her encounter with Jesus changes everything. It turns her life upside down. She marches into the town, a town where people probably gossiped about her, talked bad about her, which is why she was at the well. And you know what ends up happening? She goes before everyone and becomes an evangelist. She goes, come and see a man who told me about all that I've ever done. Jesus acknowledges her dignity as an image bearer, gives her and reveals the truth of the gospel to her, and she goes and starts bringing people out to Jesus. Think about that. He brings her into her mission and tells her, hey, go, tell people. And now she starts bringing people from the town. What grace, what mercy in her life that a sinner, right, could be restored, could be, you know, demonstrate the dignity by Christ and then go and be used by God and his mission to bring people to the Savior of the world. Here's the thing we need to realize, and this is where I'll leave us today. We have to understand the gospel breaks down barriers and it especially breaks down the barrier of sin. Are you willing, are you willing to look past the sin that disfigures the people that you love in your life, treat them with dignity and point them to Christ. That's the challenge for us. Let us follow Christ as we try to do that. God bless.